this episode of What's Happening Wapaka. I am Joni Kern. Today we are talking with Pam Gans mm -hmm. from Family Tax Service. You own Family Tax Service. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show, Pam. Thank you. We saw you last year, and I think this is just such an important topic. I wanted to have you back, so I'm glad you're here. Okay. Let's talk about, as we go into tax season, which is right around the corner, Yes. let's talk about taxes. Okay. The first thing I want to find out, because I think we are all a little bit concerned, what changes, are there any major changes, is there anything that I need to watch out for, for the 2016 taxes that is new from 2015? Um, there's going to be a delay in filing for people who claim the earned income credit or the additional child tax, child tax credit. So I have to file later? Um, you can go in and you can prepare it. You can actually, I can actually electronically file it, but the uh, Internal Revenue Service won't even touch it until the 15th of February. And then of course, the refunds will probably be deposited within 21 days. So, so we're, we're all looking at, no matter how fast we file, mm -hmm. we are looking at the, at the end of February, probably at the soonest that we're gonna see Any a refund. federal refund. Only the people that claim those two credits. Okay, so if I don't claim the earned income credit, right. then If I'm you have a regular, fine. without earned income, without the additional child tax credit, then yeah, you would be fine. So do most of us get the earned income credit? Uh, earned income credit is um, a credit that they have developed for working families where your income is low and you're trying, you know, struggle day to day to take care of your children, you know, you paycheck to paycheck type of thing. This is a credit that is refundable, which means it boosts your refund. Um, and it can be quite large depending on your income versus how many are in your family. So we're, so we're looking at most of us, there's a huge percentage of people that go to the tax services where you can get your refund the next day. Mm -hmm. So doing that at the end of January isn't going to do me any good this year because I'm still not going to get it until the end of February. Yeah, only those people with those credits though. But most people mm -hmm. who want that mm -hmm. are the people who get the earned income credit. Yeah, they, the, those people want it now. So they try to get everything done and in by the first part of February. Well, this year, they're not even gonna look at okay. it. Because if I don't get the earned income credit, I probably am more affluent than mm -hmm. poverty or 125 right. of poverty, mm -hmm. which means that the, the credit, that the refund isn't as important to me to get right away. Right. So that is something we need to keep in mind. Okay, so now let's talk about um, let's talk about some of the credits. We were talking about education credits mm -hmm. before we went on air. Right. And ways that we can, that's a credit I think that a lot of people miss out on, right. correct? There's the, the fresh out of high school, college kids, student, there's a, a tax credit called the American Opportunity uh, Education Credit. That one is available for four years and it maxes out at like, I believe it's $2,500 straight back. It comes off of income or off of ta tax directly and part of it can be refundable. Um, you have to be more than a half-time student. Um, the, for the people who are not a half-time student, there's a lifetime learning credit that's available to the people that maybe take one or two classes. You know, the homemaker that takes um, uh, a credit on holiday crafts or something on that order. It's a small 20% of the tuition they can get back on the tax return. Okay, now let's go back to the education credit mm -hmm. because there are caveats with that. Yeah. Oh yeah. If I am a dependent, mm -hmm. I don't get that. Nope, you're, whoever claims you as a dependent would take the credit on their return. Okay. Yeah. Do they have to have paid for the college out of pocket? Or can this still be done if the college is paid for with loans? It can be done with the college paid for with loans. Okay, so this is something that those of us who have college age kids mm -hmm. 
who are in college, lots of them, if they can, live at home because it's a whole lot less expensive. Oh, yeah. And parents like it because they think that they have a little bit more directional right, ability right. with their kids. Um, mm -hmm. But it is something that we need to t take a look at it, and that's available through 22. I believe so. Um, they're, you're, these individuals will get a form in the mail. It's a 1098-T. It'll show the tuition that was paid for the tax year. Um, you can, in addition to tuition, you can take your books, any extra fees that are required, um, if any classes require any specific equipment, say you're in a nursing degree and you have to get a stethoscope, that you can use that cost towards that credit. Great. Can't do housing, can't do food. Okay. That would be another good reason to stay at home. Mm -hmm. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. I get to eat well. Um, I, I don't know. I lived on pizza. In, yeah, ramen. <laughs> in college. Um, let's talk about doing taxes online mm -hmm. because to me, I know lots of people who do that, mm -hmm. but to me it has always seemed a little nerve-wracking because even though those businesses say we are going to catch every single deduction you have, I find that hard to believe. So. Talk to me about should I, can I, and are there any special things that I need to make sure that I remember if I choose to do my taxes online? Okay, there's a lot of programs out there to do that. Mm -hmm. And the federal and the state also has something called Free File, where you can go right to their website and do it. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem I've ever seen in correcting those errors is the way the tax program will ask you questions. And it'll ask you the same question maybe in two different ways. And if you answer it twice, you can screw up your taxes. So you have to be really alert, really know what it means. A lot of them have a little question mark so you can ask, what, what do you want here? And you can answer it. You just have to be really alert and be careful if you do it that way. So I need to be pretty comfortable with being able to read the language and answer the questions. Yep. And I need to be a little bit financially If you can balance adept. your checkbook. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I have any fear, then it would probably be a good idea. To go to someone who's done it for a while. And that's not particularly expensive. So it's mm -hmm. not a huge amount of money out of There's my pocket. There's not a whole lot of difference between the cost for an online tax program federal and then they charge you additional for state then if you go to somebody to have it done but okay. you should chop around see you know who's out there what their experiences is um, how long they've been doing things you know well that's like talking with any other business person right. I mean if I'm gonna have somebody fix my car I want to be able to trust them right so mm -hmm. it's I should you're saying that I should do the same thing with any accountant I should oh, at absolutely. least spend a few minutes talking with them on the phone right and making sure that I feel like there's a connection there that I trust. Right. Great. And I didn't know that the online tax services cost money. I thought yes. they were free. No. Well, there, there's a free file on the IRS website. But the other, I want to say, out of the box, green box programs that are out there to do your taxes online, um, there's a fee. Wow. They may, check, they may let you file your federal free, but they will charge you through the nose for your state. Gotcha. I did not know that. Excellent. So we're not that far. It really is, like you said, it's about the same cost. So having mm -hmm. it professionally done means that I have somebody to back it up if there's yep. a mistake on the mm -hmm. return. And it is, I am comfortable it's done right. Mm -hmm. And it's not very much more, if any, expensive. Um, yeah. In my, Perfect. in my experience, yeah, it's about the same. Perfect. Pam, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure talking with you. We'll probably do this again next year okay. because I think you, we were just talking a little bit about ago about with the new president, there can be some IRS changes. Mm -hmm. So there may be some things that are going to change that we want to be aware of for next right. year. Thank you so much, Pam. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us for this episode of What's Happening Wapaka. We will look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Pet of the Month. We're here at the Humane Society with Monica. Hi, Monica. Hello. We are 
showcasing Oswald today. Tell us about Oswald. Um, Oswald came to us as a stray uh, late in September. So actually, we don't really know what his name is, but we call him Oswald. Um, his owner did not reclaim him, so we are now trying to find him another permanent home. How old is he? We don't know for sure, but we sus suspect that he's quite aged. Um, he does. He's a little got got a little weakness going on in his back end, and one of his eyes is a little bit cloudy. So he's probably at least ten. And that's a great age to um, adopt a dog, I believe. I, I believe so, too, because all the kinks have been worked out of him. He's very well behaved. He's very friendly with everybody. Potty trained. Potty trained, and he doesn't require a whole lot of exercise. The other, the other thing that I think is great about adopting senior pets, whether it be um, a cat and they may be a little different or a dog, is that they really truly understand about love, giving and receiving love. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he is a very affectionate dog. He's, I love him. He's just a medium sized dog, so he's a great size. What breed do you think he is? Uh, um, I don't know. Maybe a little bit of healer, maybe some chihuahua, I, maybe some rat terrier. He's just kind of a whole mix, but he's got all of these cool black and brown spots going on. Yep. And he is a very friendly guy. Yeah, he is a sweet, sweet dog. So how long has he been here? Um, well, he came in the end of September. So he hasn't been here for all that long, just a couple of months. Yeah. And he's all cleared with all his shots and everything he needs. Right? So he's ready to go home. Heartworm negative, up to date on everything. I think he got his teeth cleaned, so he's all good to go. Great. So come on in to the Humane Society. Meet Oswald. That's a perfect name for him, by the way. Mm -hmm. Meet Oswald. Um, take a look at all of the other animals out here. They have a little bit of each. And please consider senior cats and senior dogs because they, have, they are a special kind of love when you bring them home. Right. And they, they need a place to go to. I know people are sad thinking about taking home an elderly dog, but, you know, think about how sad it is that the elderly dog's still sitting here. So please take him home. He needs a couch to sleep on. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Pets of the Month. Monica, we'll see you next time. Thank you.